First, let's get started. Um, so welcome to the error correction session this afternoon. Um, first speaker is Mark Webster from University of Sydney. And yeah, he's going to be talking about dialog diagonal logical gates. Um, so yeah, take it away. Thanks, Chris. So yep, I'm from Sydney, Australia. If you haven't been there, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, diagonal logical operators of stabilizer codes. And I think the original abstract talked about having eight algorithms for finding those and working with them. But I won't talk about all of those today. I'll just take a selection of the greatest hits and uh, lead you through some of those algorithms and what they mean for people in error correction world. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about diagonal gates, diagonal logical operators. And you might be wondering, why would anyone care about that? And why is this an important question? And the answer to that is really, this really fundamentally affects the architecture of your universal quantum computer. And on this slide, I have one of the proposed architectures, which is done by Daniel Latinsky in the Game of Surface Codes paper. And this is one of the best known and uh, well understood uh, architectures that people are talking about. So what we do here is we encode our logical information into logical qubits, which are protected from environmental noise. And the surface code is the choice that they make in this architecture. And that's a fantastic choice because it has great error correction properties and protects against environmental noise really well. And it's great to protect your information, but if you want to do an algorithm, you also need to be able to do operations on that data. And this is why we start talking about logical operators of codes because they're protected logical operations that you can do within the code space. So for the surface code, you really only have a couple of nice gates you can implement easily. And you can see here that I've got a logical X operator and a logical Z operator that you can implement very simply by just applying strings of Pauli operators. And that's a fairly robust way to apply a logical operator because there's not much that can go wrong that an error will spread. Because each gate that you apply, each physical Pauli that you apply, only affects one qubit. So you can't really spread errors from the gates to other qubits, and it's quite nice. We call those transversal gates broadly. But if you then want to apply a wider range of gates outside the Pauli group, we talk about different levels of a hierarchy of logical operators. So the next level is what we call Clifford operations. And so if we zoom out that picture, we now see lots of logical qubits in that second picture uh, encoded in surface code patches. And if we want to do a Clifford operation, for example, uh, a control Z, a Hadamard, or a controlled X, which are all considered Clifford operators, we use what we call lattice surgery, which involves changing the stabilizer that we measure, moving those surface code patches around, and doing measurements between those patches. But if we want universal quantum computation, we need to do something else outside the Clifford group in a fault tolerant way. And that's where we have that zoomed out picture again on the, the third picture there, where we're talking about doing level uh, logical operations outside the Clifford group. And that could include things like a logical T gate, which you can think of as a logical square root of S, a controlled S gate or a control control Z gate. And when you look at that picture there, these big things that look like swimming pools are massive uh, collections of logical qubits, uh, surface code patches, um, which are called uh, magic state factories. And in this architecture, that's how they implement those next level up gates in a fault tolerant way. So those uh, codes that are used in those swimming pools, those uh, magic state factories, all have a transversal logical operator at that third level. And so um, my question is really, if we have uh, different codes which have higher rate encoding, so for instance, in the surface code, no matter how big you make that, you only ever encode one logical qubit. What if we can encode more? And on top of that, instead of just being able to implement logical Pauli's, what if we could implement a bigger chunk of the, the Clifford group. Potentially, we could replace that whole part of the uh, encoding architecture with a code that works more efficiently for the number of qubits we have and gives us a wider range of logical operations we can do. 
And similarly, for the magic state distillation part in that third picture, what if we could design codes which have better encoding rates but do also have a transversal logical operator at that third level? This is really the game we want to play now. What if we want to move beyond the surface code and start choosing interesting codes that have better properties? And that's what the game's all about for me. So just to summarise what this work is about, um, previously, it's actually quite hard to tell for a given CSS code or stabiliser code which fault-tolerant logical operators you have. So in particular, finding the transversal ones I was talking about, there's no known way of doing that efficiently. And in this work, what we do is we um, focus on a more limited question. Uh, we look specifically at CSS codes, which are a subclass of stabiliser codes. And we look at which logical operators can you make from diagonal gates. And in, in particular, we look at diagonal Clifford hierarchy gates. And so the main algorithms are around finding all the transversal logical operators you can make in that way, but also designing uh, CSS codes that have a diagonal operator that we want implemented as a transversal logical operator. And that's something a bit different. And the third point I want to make here is that the methods we talk about here, even though we focus on CSS codes, it's very easy to see how to extend those to all stabilizer codes. And so these methods are, in fact, quite general. So the structure of the talk today, um, I've introduced a lot of concepts but not really defined them. So the intro is going to be just getting a little bit more careful about those definitions. So for instance, what's a CSS code? What do I mean by a transversal logical operator? And what do I mean by a diagonal Clifford hierarchy gate? And these are the gates we're going to use to make our logical operators. And then I'll use an example of the 422 code, which has some nice examples of logical operators. Uh, and then I'll talk about some algorithms which uh, talk about logical operators we can make out of single qubit gates. And then finally, I'll talk about algorithms which we can use for logical operators which have multi-qubit gates that are made up of multi-qubit gates. So that's what we're going to do. First, I'll define what I mean by a CSS code. So to define a CSS code in my terminology, you just define two matrices, two binary matrices, one which represents our X logical, so it has K rows, and one which represents the X checks, and we say that has, say, R rows. And we want those to be independent in terms of matrices and rows. To get our Z checks, we just take the kernel modulo 2 of that matrix that you see there, and then to turn those matrices, those binary matrices, into operators, which represent our stabilizer group uh, generators, we pretty much uh, look at those vectors and translate them into an operator form. So basically, this uh, notation x of x, uh, the capital X tells you which operator you're applying for each qubit in your code. And the binary vector x tells you which exponent you're applying in each site. So you can see that if you have n physical qubits, x of x tells you uh, which uh, power of x to apply to each of those n qubits. And I'll use that notation quite a lot throughout this talk, so please try to remember that one. Um, so once we have our uh, x checks and x logicals, we can really easily write a set of canonical code words. And if we have k logical qubits, we have two to the k uh, code words, which span our logical space. And we can represent them using length k binary vectors. So if v is a length k binary vector, we write v logical as that particular sum of computational basis vectors. Not normalized, but you can very easily write these uh, code words. Now, what do I mean by a transversal logical operator? Well, first of all, I'll define what I mean by a logical operator. So let's say we have, we call this curly C an, an encoding map. And what that encoding map does is it takes some binary vector of length K and just gives us the code word corresponding to that, just based on that formula I showed you in the previous slide. And say, so let B be a unitary acting on K qubits. So that's the same as our number of logical qubits. 
Um, this overline B operator, which acts on n qubits, uh, is a logical B operator if that diagram commutes. And really what that diagram says is that if I apply B and then encode my information, it's the same as if I encode my information and apply overline B. So really that operation on the code space corresponds to the unencoded operator B. That's what I mean by a logical operator. And it's important for these algorithms that I'm talking about that we find all of our diagonal logical operators, but also that we can find which logical action it represents. And so go from overline B, tell me what the B is and what the logical action is. Um, so by a transversal logical operator, what I mean by that is an implementation that's depth one. And if we have a depth one circuit, each of my qubits is only acted upon by one gate. And so that means that effectively I partition my uh, physical qubits into sets. And when I apply a gate, it means the errors don't spread outside of those qubits that are involved in that gate. So the possibility of errors spreading is quite low. And we think of that as a fault tolerant sort of criterion. That's what I mean by logical operators and transversal ones at that. Now, the logical operators I'm going to look at are made out of particular gate set. And the gate set that we chose was the um, diagonal Clifford hierarchy gates. And so these come in various levels. And the first level uh, just involves uh, a Z operator. And by these funny brackets like this, I mean the group generated by those operators. Um, the next level up includes an S gate, which I think of as the square root of Z, but also controlled Z operators. So I'm thinking about multi-qubit gates in my hierarchy. The third level includes T, which is the square root of S again, uh, a controlled S and a controlled, controlled Z. And so if you notice the pattern that we're seeing here, the Clifford, uh, diagonal Clifford gates at level T include a single qubit phase gate, which you can write in this form, plus controlled versions of all of the controlled phase gates at the level below. So these are the gates I'm going to use to make my logical operators. So you can see that we have single qubit phase gates, but we also allow multi-qubit gates. So that's been a lot of technical stuff to absorb. And so I'm going to follow with a little example. So the 422 code, that's quite a well-known code. And the X checks and X logicals look like that. The code words when I apply my formula look like that. And I get uh, four of those. So it encodes two logical qubits. Uh, and there's two interesting gates I just wanted to describe. The first gives you a logical control Z on qubit one and two, which is just given by that series of S and S cubed operators on each qubit. And this is a gate, uh, a logical operator made out of single qubit phase gates. And if you just apply that operator to the code words, you'll see that the only code word that gets a phase applied to it is the logical one one state. And so it really does represent a control Z operation. But we can also make logical operators out of multi-qubit gates. An example here is a logical S1, S2, where we apply S to two of the physical qubits and a control Z to the other two. So I'm also thinking about that type of operator. So I'm going to introduce to you the algorithms that deal with single qubit gates. Um, so the algorithms one to five that you see here are all about which logical operators can I make for a given code made out of single qubit phase gates. And you can see here that the complexity, once we fix the level of the Clifford hierarchy we want to talk about, are all polynomial in the code parameters. So the code parameters we're looking at here are n, the number of physical qubits, the number of logical qubits, k, and the number of independent x checks, r. So these are algorithms. Basically, the first one here is about finding the logical identities. And when you think about um, uh, gates, uh, logical operators made out of phase gates, you can conceivably think of the logical action of one of those operators being the identity. And when you start thinking about gates made out of S gates and T gates, you will see that you can get operators outside the stabilizer group. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, the complexity that I'm talking about here is in terms of both the space complexity, 
which really describes the size of the matrices that we're talking about, and the time complexity. And that really describes the number of characteristic operations we're doing in terms of mostly taking kernels of matrices. So uh, the next algorithm that I'm talking about here is search by logical action. And that's where I take a desired logical operator, so a logical control Z, and I apply an algorithm to my code and I will tell you either there is a logical control Z made out of single qubit gates or there isn't. And if there is, I'll give you the implementation of that. Logical operator test, that's just a quick way <clears throat> of telling whether a gate, a logical operator made out of single qubit gates is a logical operator on the code or not. And we use that algorithm to find all of the diagonal logical operators on a code. So the output of that algorithm is a generating set of such operators. And then finally, because it's nice to know what the logical operator actually does, the final algorithm tells you what the logical action is. So the way that we do this is by using the XP formalism, which was covered in my first paper. And really what we do here is instead of just making operators out of X and Z operators, which we do in the Pauli stabilizer formalism, we instead talk about phase operators. And you can see if you use these assumptions, you can describe the logical operators we can make out of single qubit gates within the XP formalism. And the nice thing is the algebra of those operations reduces to addition and multiplication of vectors. And so we can make these algorithms efficient by using linear algebra. So here's an example of the kind of code we can analyze using these techniques. So this is an 832 hypercube code. And we make a cube and we put qubits on all of the vertices. And the X checks basically are, uh, correspond to an X operator on all of those vertices. The X logicals correspond to faces of that cube. And the Z checks are found by taking the kernel. <clears throat> so when we apply our algorithms, First of all, the logical identity algorithm, we find that there is a logical identity operator, which is just S on all of the vertices, which is not in our stabilizer group. So you can see that finding those logical identities may be a non-trivial exercise, and it is imp an important first step for some of our other algorithms. And then when we apply algorithm three to find a generating set, we find this table of operators here. So you can see that we find all the logical Z operators, but we also find logical control Z operators between each pair of qubits and a logical control control Z operator. But the nice thing about this <clears throat> is these algorithms don't work just on small codes. Because they're polynomial complexity, we can apply these to very large codes. And the nice thing is we get a generating set of logical operators and the logical actions, so you can understand which operations are really possible on your code. So some of the examples we have in our paper, and they are all in this GitHub repository, are, for instance, at level two of the Clifford hierarchy, we get some nice codes that are big with level two Clifford logical operators. So basically any self-orthogonal classical code will give you a code that is likely to have these. But also we do some examples of 2D hyperbolic codes, and you see that example here. Um, and these have a much higher encoding rate than the um, surface code. So if you take two five by five lattices and make surface codes, you use up 50 qubits, physical qubits, and you encode two logical qubits. But with this code, we take 56 physical qubits, we encode 14 logical qubits, and we have distance six, which is actually higher than the distance of the surface codes. But on top of that, we have a wider set of transversal logical operators. So it's intriguing. We might well be able to do better than the surface code. Um, you can also analyze some really large codes, which are, say, uh, 3D hyperbolic color codes. These typically have 500 or more physical qubits. And certainly analyzing these was beyond the state of the art for what we previously had for arbitrary codes. So I think I need to go to questions pretty soon, but what I'm gonna do is 
maybe I'm going to go to open questions future work straight away. So just to recap what we've done. So we have come up with efficient methods to find these logical operators made out of diagonal gates. And these methods work not just for single qubit gates, but for multi-qubit gates. And that's, I think, something that's quite different. But the other thing is we've managed to show that the, Clifford, the diagonal Clifford hierarchy can be represented within the XP formalism. And again, that's both single and multi-qubit gates. So if you're interested in, say, simulating circuits made out of a whole bunch of diagonal gates using multi-qubit operators, then maybe the XP formalism is a good way to do that. But really, the big, big ticket questions for me are around, let's find some better codes. So what if we found a high rate code, say an LDPC code, that had a higher encoding rate, but also the full Clifford group implemented using transversal logical operators? That would be super useful. We could effectively replace that whole first part of the architecture and then need to worry, worry about uh, error correction properties, obviously, but very intriguing question. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say, the big ticket items anyway. If you want to get in touch, I'm really happy to uh, receive emails or if you have questions about what I've talked about today. But in the short term, let's go to questions, see if anyone's got anything they want to ask. Thank you. Uh, is there any chance to go to non-diagonal uh, gates? So yeah, if you think about the Clifford hierarchy, it has a lot of subgroups that are isomorphic to the diagonal. So that's one idea. But I think it would be really nice to come up with methods for other types of gates. So for instance, a swap operator, and also things like Hadamard's. And I think that these questions are less likely to be as tractable, but there may be some good heuristic algorithms that we can use. And I think that's where the interesting stuff is. Because if you can expand your gate set, you can obviously make a bigger chunk of the Clifford hierarchy. So yeah, I, I, that's one of the interesting questions I'd like to look at a bit more. Yep, thank you. Is that one out there? sense. Um, so thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a question. Um, all this algorithm that you you propose it only works with CSS codes, so it doesn't work with any kind of codes. Yeah, it certainly does. So here's a slide I prepared earlier. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I was not there. <laughs> so yeah, um, basically what this slide is about is you give me a stabilizer code and I'll show you a CSS code on the same number of physical qubits that that maps to, where I understand the logical operator structure, and I just convert back to the stabilizer code by applying some conjugation of X operators. And that gives me the same uh, logical actions. So in the paper you'll see, in the appendix I must admit, uh, a method for doing that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. No worries. Thanks, guys.